For the town in Bangladesh, see Sala, Bangladesh. For the village in Achil, see Sala, Achil. Sala is a fictional planet described in An Attempt to Escape by Boris and Arkady Strugatsky. This planet is a part of the so-called Noon Universe and presents a world in an early feudalistic stage opposite to e.g. late feudalism of Arcaner. The planet was named after Saul Savel Repnin, one of the space explorers who discovered it in 2141 AD. Sala is the second planet out of four of N7031 solar system, about one and a half times further from its sun than Earth is from ours. The day and night cycle on Sala lasts 28 hours, its mass is about 1.1 of Earth, which means that acceleration of gravity is roughly equal to 10.8 meters per square second. It has three moons, natural satellites. There are only two continents on Sala: the bigger one on equator and the smaller one close to a pole. It's not specified which one in the book. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Inhabitants. The native intelligent species of Sala are humans which are genetically identical to those of Earth. The society of these people is mostly feudal and ritual based, although some elements still resemble the ancient slave-owning regime. The only country described in an attempt to escape doesn't have a name or, at least, it was never mentioned. Apparently it's a monarchy with great and mighty cliff, glaring battle, with a foot in heaven, living until the end of machines. An approximate translation by Vadim, the interpreter of the expedition that discovered Sala in chief. The last part has to do with the so-called everlasting machines, see below, and symbolizes eternity. It is also mentioned that, great and mighty cliff, the minimum shortening of the king's title, is eager to star a conquest on other lands which suggests that there are other countries on the equatorial continent. As already stated, the inhabitants of Sala are physically identical to Homo sapiens but some aspects of their psychology is different, for example, the tone of voice appropriate for giving orders is the same with which earthlings plead and complain citing Anton, the third member of the expedition, as if someone stepped on a kitten. Another strange fact is that they are shocked by any drawn picture, probably that's cultural. The language people in the land of great and mighty cliff use is similar to Japanese. <laughs> Technology Technologically Sala is generally somewhere in the Earth's early Middle Ages. The people of Sala can forge weapons like swords and spears, can build houses and palaces and ride on some specimen of local fauna, for example, large birds of prey called samsons that are visually similar to ostriches. Politically they have already invented a sort of government, which consists of great and mighty cliffs advisors, and a royal court. Some by the way remarks indicate that there is also some kind of philosophical topics usually discussed by aristocratic part of the population. Everlasting machines Apart from the native Middle Ages technology stand the so-called everlasting machines. 
This phenomenon looks like an approximately 80 km long 50 miles highway between two huge, 500-meter diameter 1, feet craters filled with ultra-heavy and dense smoke. The car or tank-like machines the explorers later recalled four or five types of them appear from the northern crater in a random order, travel along the highway to the southern one and, finally, disappear in the latter. This movement is a kind of perpetuum mobile, any obstacle put on the highway is sooner or later destroyed by the ongoing waves of the machinery. The machines themselves are primitive from the 22nd century Earth's point of view not reprogrammable quasi-living mechanisms. The word, machines, doesn't exist in the Salian language, they use some other word to describe this occurrence, for example, in the full title of their king. It is logical to suggest that, everlasting machines, are a legacy left by a much more advanced civilization wanderers, see below, Earth and Sala. The people of Sala have a legend about how machines came to be in the beginning of the universe and for them they became a symbol of eternity. However, Great and Mighty Cliff apparently understands the importance of controlling these mechanisms for his future wars and uses cheap prisoner manpower since the craters are located in a rather unfriendly climatic zone to try to learn how to move and otherwise control the everlasting machines. The methods that are used to achieve this are barbaric although quite understandable considering the low technology development of Great and Mighty Cliff's country. The prisoners are forced to stop a machine on the highway with their own bodies, often dying in the attempt, and then to press all possible buttons, levers and keys or try to start the motors manually. Very often nothing happens, in rare occasions the machines explode, but if someone manages to make a machine move he women are not assigned to this task is immediately granted amnesty no matter what he's done before. Apparently that's the only reason that keeps the prisoners from revolting. Earth and Sala Sala was discovered by a freelance explorer expedition consisting of Sal Repnin, Vadim and Anton the surnames of the second two are not stated anywhere in 2141. A flight to N7031 was planned by professional explorers because it belongs to the so-called Wanderers Road, a list of planets where the wanderers theoretically could leave their traces. It was compiled by August Iogan Maria Bader and Leonid Gorbovsky and made public, so, despite little attention paid to the list and a postponement of official expedition, the discovery of fellow humans and traces left by wanderers on Sala apparently wasn't unexpected. No information on subsequent progressor work on Sala is available. <laughs> 